This is really frustrating. What's up guys, Jason here, aspiring entrepreneur, showing you everything I'm doing to build a online business from scratch. And in today's episode of building an online business from scratch, I'm gonna talk about the top 10 things you should know about ClickFunnels automated webinars. And so what I'm gonna be doing in this is just rapid fire going through 10 things that I've learned trying to set up a automated webinar inside of ClickFunnels. So this isn't gonna be a tutorial on how to set things up or how ClickFunnels works in general. These are just gonna be some little nitpicky things that I found that really you just won't know unless you've actually dived into the software, tried to run funnels and, you know, tested automated webinar funnels and then, you know, lost uh, some advertising dollars running traffic to pages that don't work. So to save you from that uh, grueling feeling, uh, here are the top 10 things that I think you should know about ClickFunnels automated webinars. They are all negative. This isn't me bashing ClickFunnels in any way. There's, there's some great things ClickFunnels does. I just think ClickFunnels is pretty, turning out to be pretty weak in this area, and I'm just about ready to move on to trying another piece of webinar software, mostly because I am a perfectionist. So to break things out for you, I'm gonna go general, then I'm gonna talk about the landing page, the webinar room itself, a little bit of the replay things, and then the emails, because those are kind of the big components. Well, actually, I think I'll skip the replay page, just talk about the emails. So number one, generally speaking, when you're setting up your pages in ClickFunnels, if you decide to use them, you wanna be aware of the fact that you need to name all of your pages as though people are actually gonna be able to see those names. And this is because ClickFunnels actually pulls the names of your funnel and your funnel steps into part of its automation. And that's something that is included deep, and I mean deep in the documentation, but it took me a long time to see that, which means I ran traffic when I had steps and pages named like indoctrination video one or like webinar one or webinar replay room two. You know, so when you name those things like that, when you're doing split tests, just make sure that when you name pretty much anything inside of ClickFunnels, just always assume that ClickFunnels is gonna be pulling that name and showing it to your customers. So that does it for number one. So number two and three, deal with the landing page itself. So number two or number one for the landing page, oh, that's gonna get confusing. I'm just gonna say number two is when you're setting up the landing pages, you don't have the control that you have in Stell Seminar and Ever Webinar in terms of the dates and times. So you are stuck showing three dates and you have to show the previous you know, day's replay. There's not a way to change that. And that can get really mucky when you're trying to set up your autoresponders on the back end, which is number three when it comes to your landing page. You, when you integrate with an outside autoresponder and even in Action Edits itself, there's no real way to know which one of those dates they sign, dates or times they signed up for. That information just isn't there. So not only are you stuck with showing three dates and yesterday's replay, you are, you can't, you know, segment out, oh, they're going to show up in two days or they're going to show up in three days or they're going to show up in one day. Luckily, you can decide what times to show. So even though you're stuck showing three days in advance for your automated webinar, you can choose what times of day. I think they have six choices total. It's like 11, a, um, you know, 11, 4, or 11, 2, 4, and 8. Um, I'm missing two. I'm sorry. I'm missing two. Anyway, that's beside the point. So you can change the times. You just can't modify the dates. And then if you're using an outside autoresponder, you're going to be stuck with just having a list of people who signed up for one of your webinar times. You're not really going to know which time they signed up for, which date or time they signed up for. So number four deals with the webinar room itself. And this is kind of one of the biggest nails in the coffin. And that is if someone comes to the webinar page and they refresh it while the webinar is going the first 10 to 15 minutes, the webinar is going to start over. And that, uh, depending on you know, how much uh, budget you have or if you tried those other softwares, that pretty much doesn't happen any other place I've tested. Um, to me, that might be the reason that I abandoned ClickFunnels altogether. I'm not quite sure yet, but that is something just huge. You know, if you're supposed to be showing a webinar and someone refreshes the page in the first, you know, 10 to 15 minutes and it goes back to the beginning, that's pretty huge. 
Now, the good news is if the webinar has been going on for some time and you refresh the page, ClickFunnels does figure out that, hey, they've been there for a while and it will bring them bring you back to where you're supposed to be. And I know this because I've tested it with my own funnel and I've tested it with other people's funnels, just signing up as a random registrant and then playing with the refreshes because I wanted to see if I screwed something up or if it was happening to other people as well. And yes, it was happening to other people as well. So that's number four. Then number five, there's no native chat function. Now, if you pick up Funnel University for like five or $600 a year, they do have a very, very limited chat application that you can put on the side that kind of simulates chat. Although one of my clients went and picked that up and he's been playing with it and he's had a lot of issues with it. It seems pretty uh, atrocious in terms of usability on the back end. And so we're just gonna say number five, there's no real chat function for your automated webinars. And a quick bonus tip, if you do decide to use ClickFunnels, even though I'm bashing it to all get out in this video, you wanna make sure that you set the video to autoplay and be aware that if you're using something like Vimeo or YouTube, the controls are gonna flash in the beginning. I use Vimeo and when the webinar first loads, you'll see the uh, Vimeo pause button show up for a couple seconds and then it'll go away. So if someone shows up right then and there, then they're gonna know that it's uh, a completely automated webinar. Now, of course, we're not pretending like it's live, but at the same time, we don't wanna scream at the top of our lungs that it's automated. Now, number six, we're gonna switch gears and start talking about the emails. And this is another place where ClickFunnels begins to fall short yet again. And this has to do with the date and time. Remember I talked about, you know, there's specific dates they sign up for. Now on the landing page, it does have the ability to show things in the user's time zone. However, when the, web when the webinar emails go out, it will always show in Eastern Standard Time. So even though I sign up in Pacific Time or Central Time, all of the webinar times are gonna show up in Eastern time. And even though I knew this, I actually had to run some extra tests because I kept forgetting that the time I was seeing was on Eastern time. So I'd show up to my own webinar and I was late. The webinar was already over because it was in, in Eastern time, not my time. So that's another pretty big thing to consider or look out for. And you might need to do some things around your email copy to say, hey, it's showing in Eastern time. Make sure that you adjust it to, you know, whatever your time zone is. So even though time zone adjusts on the landing page, it does not adjust in the emails. Number seven is you are limited to three emails that go out to remind them to show up and then you have one email that can go out if they didn't show up to the webinar and you have one email to go out for the replay link and that is it. So even if you pay an extra $200 for that Actionetics integration, you can add emails you know, onto each one of those, which you should eventually. However, if you wanna send extra emails that say, hey, show up to the webinar, or if you wanna send extra emails that send to the replay link, that actually integrates with the countdown timer, so the replay link will go away after the time that you said it would, then you're pretty much out of luck. Like it's not gonna happen. So in terms of links to the replays or your webinar itself, you're limited to three upfront for the first webinar. You're limited to one when you want them to sh you know, go sign up again, and then you're limited to one with the replay. So that's number seven. Number eight, again, with the emails has to do with that email webinar link itself. So that link is set up by ClickFunnels so that when someone signs up, you know, their date and their time, the link is gonna take them to the webinar countdown page before the webinar. Perfect. When it's time for the webinar, they click the link, it's gonna redirect them to the webinar, you know, actual webinar, automated webinar room. Perfect. When they click the link after the webinar has happened, it takes them to the webinar room as if the webinar is starting right then and there. Not so great. So what, is, what does that mean practically? Practically, that means if I sign up for your webinar, I'm supposed to show up Tuesday, eight o'clock. Okay, for whatever reason, my car broke down, I didn't make it home. So I get home at 11 or 12 o'clock at night. I'm like, man, I missed the webinar. I'm not seeing an email for a replay link. I really wanted to see your webinar. What happens if I just, I don't know, just click on the webinar link anyway, see what happens. You click on that webinar link. Oh, that's weird. Why is the webinar starting? I thought the webinar was at eight. It's 11 o'clock at night. Why is the webinar going? Yeah, it's a silly story, but it illustrates that it's gonna, it's another step in the process that kind of screams at your prospects that, 
I'm just forcing you to show up to watch a pre-recorded video at a specific set time and it's 100% automated. I'm not even there. And unfortunately, the link works even weeks later. So if you send a, if you have someone sign up and then they don't check their email for like a month and then they come back and click on that link, as long as it's after their scheduled webinar time, it will take them to the webinar room and they'll be able to watch the webinar pretty much whenever they feel like it. So not very cool. And number nine deals with multiple signups. And this might just be something with Actionetics itself, but I just wanted to bring this up because I found that as I was testing, even though I would archive people in my Actionetics account, people being myself, because I was using the same email to test over and over again, I found that ClickFunnels started to have problems when you signed up multiple times with the same email. Now, of course, most people won't do this. However, when you're trying to retarget people and bring people back when they haven't gone to the webinar the first time, you say, hey, you missed it. You should go sign up again. Choose a different date and time. Well, all of a sudden ClickFunnels isn't sending them that new information on that new date and new time because it's that person is being pulled from the system and saying, oh, they already went to a webinar. Um, so that's definitely something you want to be aware of. I'm sure if I reached out to support, there'd be some little hack to figure it out or solve it, but it's just another step where you go, Oh, it's like another thing to do. And so I'm on number nine. You can tell I'm getting a little tired because all of these things have, each one of these points has costed me at least two or three hours worth of, you know, testing or a, a few hundred dollars in ad spend just figuring out like, oh, that part doesn't work, right? And then number 10 is kind of a given after all of this, but I just want, I like to think of ClickFunnels as a Mac versus a PC. A lot of the other, you know, solutions out there are like PCs. If you're okay getting into the code, you're okay fixing things when you get malware, then that's great. But if you want something that's super streamlined, just does everything for you, then ClickFunnels is, really is the way to go. I mean, I've, I've kind of been bashing it over the last nine. So number 10 is that it just doesn't play well with others. Uh, as you Mac users know, Mac is great when you have a Mac, you have your iPod, you have your iPhone, you know, your, uh, your iCloud, you're using the Apple Watch, you know, everything works together seamlessly because that's what Apple does. It makes sure all of its products work together. Now, as soon as you want to go buy, uh, you know, your Samsung, your LG, then things kind of get a little wonky with the Mac. You know, you're not quite sure if it's, it's going to work or not. You know, case in point, the computer behind me, it doesn't work with my external LG drive. Like that's, but you know, my Windows computers works just fine, right? But ClickFunnels, like a Mac, gives takes takes away some of that flexibility, but in return gives you simplicity. So after all of those points, just think of it this way. If you're gonna use ClickFunnels, it needs to be all in. You gotta just use ClickFunnels all in and really not try and use anything else. If you wanna use anything else, you wanna be using you know your Thrive card or your SAM card, your active campaign, your MailChimp, your um, I'm running out of things to say, get response. Now, you know, you're, you want to use ever webinar or stealth seminar instead, then click funnels is not for you. So all of those points leading up to number 10, which is click funnels just doesn't really seem to play nice with other solutions. I mean, they have zapper, they have, they, they do their, their best to integrate with other things, but just in terms of flexibility, like you're really stuck inside that ecosystem, which means all of the previous nine points that I talked about, you're really going to have to come to terms with and just accept because trying to integrate ClickFunnels with other solutions is just going to compound. This list of 10 will turn into a list of 20 or 30 as soon as you start to do that. And that's just from my personal experience and some of my clients' experiences as well. You know, me recommending trying ClickFunnels and then, you know, things not working with other pieces of software that they're already using. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this video informative and actionable. If you got some value out of it, go ahead and hit that like button and then subscribe to my YouTube channel for more business building tactics and strategies and marketing, you know, software reviews just like this one. Again, over on my YouTube channel, I'm going from A to Z and everything in between to put together a online webinar sales funnel, which will eventually turn into a full-time consulting 
business. So I just wanted to you know, record this video for you guys to show some of what I've been doing and what I've been dealing with and why some of these videos have kind of slowed down. I know I had a comment the other day asking, hey, where are your, where are your stats on your ads and your you know, conversion rates and all that stuff? And that is coming, but I have to, I have, to have a well-oiled machine first and I want to share what that well-oiled machine looks like before I spend all of my time and energy testing ads because that is a full-time job. So you need to make sure that everything else is good to go before you start giving money to Facebook, giving money to AdWords, giving money to YouTube. I guess YouTube, AdWords, same thing. But anyway, all that to say, those videos are coming soon. So I want to thank you guys. I just hit 300 subscribers this week. So thank you to all of you who have been, you know, joining me with this journey and then comment below with what your take on click funnels is. You know, if you have click funnels, I want to know if you agree with any of these points, if you've had some of these problems, if you don't have click funnels, I want to, I want to know what other softwares are you looking at so we can all figure out what software is going to work best with you and your business. So again, thank you for watching. Until next time, keep building the business you love. Take care.